the boys wanted to do something in the afternoon. One is a fan of World War II and likes to collect that memorabilia. And we went to an antique mall, and there in a case was a Medal of Freedom, the medal from World War II. And my grandson was just, he, he could not believe that somebody... Uh, ancestor, their grandparent, or a relative would have earned that through blood, sweat, tears, and sacrifice, and that it would be sitting in a case for sixteen dollars. And he he is you know out of the mouths of babes, uh, so much wisdom. And he said, how can somebody put a price on? Uh, that kind of award for standing up for freedom. And, you know, it's just such, a, it's such an invaluable. And Ronald Reagan always said, you know, it is, we don't pass freedom along in the bloodstream. We have to fight for it every single generation. And you look at what freedom has done. Freedom begets opportunity. Opportunity begets a better quality of life, a better quality of life. Uh, begets, begets so, so much, much for individuals, individuals. and uh, uh, it, it is astounding to me that now we have this popping up of let's embrace socialism by those on the left mm -hmm. and the danger to our traditions and our Judeo-Christian ethic and the underpinning of our founding. Well, in, in college I had a couple of professors that were about socialists, uh, but, you know, they would do their thing. They would try their best to, to espouse socialism, but, you know, just sort of rolled off. And I, you didn't really, you know, you, whenever you wrote a paper or you wrote a, a test answer down, you try to spit back to them what they uh, were trying to say just to make it great. <laughs> but, uh, but I didn't believe any of it. But it seems like now, now the, the students are coming out of college and they, they're latching on to this. And, it's yeah. a lack of history, knowledge of history. See, that is it, Jeff. I think that is that is it. You're talking about uh, people that were born and grew up in a post-Cold War world. And they don't realize the insidious nature of the threat that Russia pro proposes uh, poses to us. Because they don't see that as a threat. Why shouldn't everybody have equal everything? It's how they approach it. Well, what we are given is the opportunity. Everyone has access to that opportunity. And if someone is blocked from having an opportunity, we work tirelessly to make certain that they do have that opportunity. You know, the General Assembly this week has been working on an education bill that would allow parents to take the money that is allocated for their child and move them out of a failing school so that they can open those doors of opportunity. Yeah. So uh, many, many clubs and organizations, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Boys and Girls Club, constantly reaching in to lift children up and give them access to opportunity. And that is one of the things that makes our community strong and our nation great. Yeah, we were just talking about that with Senator Bell the other day. It passed the House on the voucher. And it's going to yeah. send it, to, I guess, yesterday or, or, you know, to look at and vote. And I think there's some changes being made for it. But it looks like it's going to go forward as right. far as the vouchers. It Which will be a huge move. You know, Wall Street Journal had an op-ed in about this yesterday, praising... Uh, Governor Lee and uh, Donald Trump, Trump did Governor too. McNally. President yes, Trump he tweeted did. it he out. Tweeted out too. And um, it's, it's a, a very bold step, step, but it is the kind of bold change in the way government works. And I understand the teachers' unions are very much opposed to this, but uh, I have to tell you, I think to allow children that are locked in these failing schools. Um, it is important to do. Yeah, absolutely. And we, these ideas were around back when we were in the state senate too. We uh, just started the charter school movement uh, right. whenever we were there, and uh, the vouchers was in the background. We were hoping. But to I guess there. the charter schools was the same push, you know, like it was now. Negative. They they pushed behind and 
it's it's, it's helped, helped some communities that really need it or failing communities. Oh, absolutely. It's and the, uh, the unions have seen now that the sky yeah. didn't fall with that. So I'm hopeful that they'll yeah. understand after this gets going for a while, these educational savings accounts or whatever you want to call it. Here's these. one of the things that I hope comes from this. I hope that the union leadership realizes this is all about the children. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, this is about yeah. children, Tennessee children and giving these children the opportunity to dream those big dreams and find a way to make them come true, yeah, yeah. to have educators help these children figure out how they best learn so that they do receive an education to do whatever it is. Absolutely. See, even middle-class families can have the uh, ability to move or to sell their house and move to another neighborhood if they want to choose the school that their children go to. Uh, but some of those folks in the inner cities don't have that opportunity. They can't just right. up and move like uh, as readily as middle class and upper class families can do. And your zip code should never be the predicate to mm. your success in life. Absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Well, we've got to talk about children a little bit. Let's talk about yeah. immunization. Let's talk about the, the measles outbreak. Yes. In 22 states we've had come out and... What's, what's going on with that? Well, um, we are very concerned about this, and the first piece of legislation I passed in the U.S. Senate was a resolution encouraging parents to talk to a health care professional. There is a lot of misinformation on the Internet, and what we want them to do is to talk to a health care professional, make certain that they have the correct information, and uh, do what is going to be best for that child. Mm -hmm. And there is a measles um, outbreak. It has, we do have some cases here in Tennessee. Uh, there is concern not only for the children, but also for older, for grandparents who maybe never had measles, didn't have a vaccination, and the exposure for them, and hospitals are beginning to look at their plan for how they would deal with this, because it's very contagious. You can uh, contract measles easily, and they're looking at how you would confine these individuals that end up contracting measles. Yeah. I heard just, uh, just the other day that if you are in the same room with someone that has the measles virus and you haven't been vaccinated, you have a 90% chance of, of catching the disease uh, just by being in the same room. Uh, you don't have to have interacted or touched or do anything. Just being in the room, you have a 90% chance of, of, of wow. I heard that this morning. Uh, I was watching Fox and Friends, and they had a physician um, that was making that point and uh, encouraging people to get tested now to see if they're immune. And uh, because many older people that are in there, 60s, 70s, 80s that are helping to care for children may not have had a, a vaccination or may no longer have that immunity. And that just being in the room, you could, uh, could catch it. And so, yes, it's something that is tremendous concern. So we did have uh, a resolution that we passed saying, don't believe what you read on the internet. <laughs> yeah, we, we talk about that. You know, <laughs> I, please talk to a healthcare professional yeah. and let's take good care of these children. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and speaking of the internet, uh, broadband is a is a, is a big yes. thing that the county right now is pushing. The county schools, and I know some parents have to drive their kids in somewhere where they can get internet, do their homework and stuff. And, it, and, and I know the county commission, it's, it's a big, big ordeal in the, in the school systems, not only us, I guess in Tennessee. Across the state, it is. Because uh, at this point, uh, through Governor Haslam, Governor Lee, mm -hmm. and the General Assembly, the money they put forward, coupled with a lot of the work that I did at the federal level, uh, rural uh, utility service grants, uh, removing barriers, things of that nature. Uh, we have been able to get us down to where it's only about 15% of the state without access to high-speed Internet. But, yes, we do need to close that digital divide. I have filed bipartisan legislation with Tammy Baldwin out of Wisconsin, and what we're doing is 
uh, allowing, removing barriers for these Internet Exchange data centers so that it will help us to expand that high-speed inter Internet into unserved and underserved areas. And with the advent of 5G, uh, which is the next generation of wireless service, which will be revolutionary. It's as revolutionary as going from 4G, from going analog to digital, uh, then going from 4G to 5G is that revolutionary. So uh, what we're wanting to do is make certain that we have access. So that it's like this. You cannot have high... Um, without high-speed Internet, you cannot have 21st century economic development or education or health care or law enforcement with the FirstNet network. And so you have to look at this. Now, once we get it going down somebody's road, we need to make certain that we get these adoption rates up because only about 60% of the population is choosing to get on uh, the broadband when it comes uh, into their area. So we need those adoption rates up, especially for those that are using home health services, things of that nature. Oh yeah, more and more of the, the home health. Of the, I've seen prescription machines that are uh, tied to the internet that right. help uh, uh, seniors uh, stay on schedule with their prescription right. meds and everything else. It's, uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, a young entrepreneur here in Cleveland uh, 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 has uh, started a business like that. So anyway, that's good stuff. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what's the major difference between being a U.S. Senator and being a, a congressman? I think the major difference is the scheduling and the pace because with the uh, House, I had 19 counties and I worked through those 19 counties. 19 counties. 19. It was yeah, a you huge. Only had five or six. I had two. four, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I had um, 19 counties in my congressional district. So that was a lot. Kept me busy, kept our team busy. But uh, in the Senate, you know, you've got the whole state, and it is um, a scheduling, um, you know, our team does a great job getting us into the counties, and, you know, like here in Bradley County, we'll be meeting with some of the elected officials today and working on some issues that are important to them, and look forward to doing that. Well, how um, how are you uh, planning to, to fight this stem of socialism, Senator? What what can be done to to try to to, to turn the tide? Uh, well, one of the things I hope people will stay in touch with me. I do a weekly newsletter, blackburn.senate.gov. They can sign up for it, uh, and then share that information with people. Help individuals to realize that you know they are. Uh, it is up to them to take good care of this country, and it's important for them to do that. So I would say that is item number one. And um, then be, in, be involved. Uh, if they come across people in their Sunday school class or, you know, maybe their bridge group or their garden club or their civic club, and they start saying, well, I think we could live with this or that, Talk to them about that incremental um, is slippery slope toward socialism, and you don't ever want to get on it. And do, are the actions you're taking, whether it's at the local, state, or federal level, does it encourage freedom or does it encourage socialism? Right. Okay. Yeah. That's capitalism. I mean. Yeah. Well, I call it free enterprise. Free enterprise. When I'm talking to millennials, well, yeah. I use the term free enterprise because they're all for free. Yeah. And I want them to be free yeah. and to have the job they want, not the job the government wants. I want them to be free. Uh, if they want to be wealthy, so be it. I want them to be free to experience their version 
of the American dream. And the I love professors, it. their professors are telling them capitalism bad, bad, bad. You know? That's right. Free enterprise. That's what I'm going to say. Free enterprise. 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 For my bipartisan leadership and accomplishment. And I'm doing that same thing in the Senate. The vaccine resolution I did with a Democrat, Senator Tammy Duckworth out of Illinois. She's a mom. Um, I did the broadband with uh, Senator Baldwin, a Democrat out of Wisconsin. Uh, Senator John Tester, another Democrat, and I have taken the lead on overseeing the veterans, the VA, uh, legislation to force them to have a task force to be sure they get these electronic health records right the first time. Veterans should never have to run around the country chasing their health care records. This is ridiculous. Let's solve this and do it right. So, so there again, again Democrat, Democrat, Republican, Republican. Uh, Senator, Senator Klobuchar, Klobuchar and I are doing bipartisan work on the privacy issue. So I have established very quickly uh, the willingness to work in a bipartisan manner. Great, great. Yeah, I think that just behooves the, the state of Tennessee and the country. And so uh, I applaud you for that. Thank you. Uh, it's hard, I think, you know, from all you hear these days, I'm sure it's a, a very... Uh, charged atmosphere up there in some ways, but it sounds sure. just refreshing to know that you, you guys are still getting together and working together across the aisle. That's yes, we are. Yeah. Good. Indeed, we are. Well, what yes. do you, uh, to, I guess we'd be remiss without asking you what you think about the uh, presidential race and what, what's going on there. I got to tell you, I hope all 20 of them stay out there talking every day. <laughs> you know, as they talk about their agenda, the Green New Deal, yeah. uh, Medicare for all, which means health care for none. It means government control, government run. Uh, you know, a guaranteed wage, minimum wage. How, you know, and they focus on minimum wage. I want people to be free to earn their maximum wage. Exactly, exactly. You know, as they talk about a guaranteed education. Well, if the government is going to guarantee you your education, you are guaranteed they're going to tell you what you're going to study. Exactly. And then they're going to guarantee you that they're going to tell you where they're going to work, where you're going to work, where you're going to live. That's not what people want. So let's have them keep talking. And let's have Bernie keep talking about letting felons vote for the jail cell. Let's let him keep at it. So if the government's going to pay everybody, why do they want to go to college? Why do they want to go to school? What, what, what's, what's the use of it? I mean, well, that's what I'm thinking. Think about it. Yeah, so who's going to earn the money for the government? Who's going to pay for this? Yes. Somebody's got Somebody is always paid. There is nothing free. There is nothing free. But, uh, Senator, you're in touch with all Tennesseans and Republicans, Democrats, Independents alike. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe that Tennessee Democrats are, are buying into this stuff. I've got to tell you, I've been level. all over the state. Yeah. And there are a lot of Democrats that are Tennessee Democrats, and they will say, Marsha, the Democrat Party is so far to the left, I kind of uh, turn my back and hide and run and don't want to talk about it. Because um, that is not our... Tennessee values, and as I said at the start, taking those Tennessee values to Washington, D.C. is something I do every single day. People want us to respect the Constitution. They want people that are in elective office to realize we are a nation of laws. We abide by the rule of law. They want respect for religious liberty. They want respect for the Judeo-Christian values that underpin the founding of this nation. And they do not want to see socialism get a foothold. Our veterans will say, that is not what I fought for. Exactly. And uh, you better do a good job of protecting it. And I always tell veterans, I hope that my service 
and the public sphere does honor to their service and sacrifice. Well, I can tell you uh, firsthand that it does, Senator, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, I tell you, Senator Marsha Blackburn is, uh, when she gets on uh, a project or an idea, she's she's right there. She doesn't give up. She's she's uh, uh, works hard. I mean, while other people are sleeping, this senator's working, and uh, so, <laughs> so I appreciate you very much, Senator. Thank you so much, and uh, congratulations on being the first female U.S. Senator for the state of Tennessee. Groundbreaking historical uh, uh, event there, and so uh, I knew you were going to do it. I uh, knew it was going to happen, and. Uh, but we, we appreciate, appreciate you so, so much. And thank, thank you for coming into the, the morning job with Jeff and Tom. Absolutely. Two, Two mugs on the mug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be set mug. to go. Yeah, grab a cookie and yeah. I'll be set for the day. Yeah, well, we <laughs> hope you have a great day here in Bradley <laughs> County. We're, we thank welcome you. you. We, we want, want you to come, come as often as you possibly can. can. And, uh, and come, come back, back by the studio. studio. We'd love to have you back here at the, on the morning job. Listen, time. every time I'm in Bradley County, I'm going to start my day. All here. right. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. Awesome. Thanks. Well, thanks, well, thanks so, so much. And, uh, and uh, folks, uh, the, the fastest, fastest hour in radio has, has come and gone once, once again. again. And uh, we, we appreciate, appreciate you being with us today. Uh, another, another week is in the books. Uh, so we'll be back Monday morning, 7 a.m., for another edition of the morning job with Jeff and Tom. And uh, we, we hope, hope that, that you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend, weekend, folks. And, and until Monday morning, morning we, we hope that you keep moving onward and looking upward. We're going to let the Pure Prairie League take us out of here. Have a great weekend, everybody.